So I've been getting a lot of comments uh, asking me to review different wind turbines. And so that's what this video is. We're just going to go through a few of these uh, different wind turbines that people have suggested that I review and take a look at. And I haven't tested any of these things out personally, but here are a few right now. So uh, Colin Stanford, he said, what about the Halcyon wind turbine? Well, let's check it out. So what Halcyon, and I, I'm assuming that this is the correct one, but this is the power pod. Uh, it doesn't look like much, but I'm, I'm guessing what this is, is something that would go on top of a roof that would look like an ordinary roof vent. However, it's anything but ordinary. Uh, they have a small illustration here. There's a turbine inside that actually spins. Uh, much like the rooftop vents that would spin, uh, this is doing the same thing, but internally, uh, and, but what I don't see here is the scale of this actual thing. And, you know, scale is everything when it comes to wind energy, uh, you know, because of, you know, wind, you get the power from the wind because of the transfer of kinetic energy and the larger the area, the more. Uh, energy you have to actually transfer. So uh, if these are small, I wouldn't expect much out of them. Uh, if they're big, well, they're going to look um, strange. I, I guess it doesn't matter though, because a lot of people consider wind turbines to be kind of like a breakup of the horizon anyway. They're all strange looking to some people. I find them quite nice looking myself, much better than a power line or, you know, there's so many things that we've come to accept as okay in the horizon but uh apparently wind turbines for some people are not that so mo fz 117 uh asked me to do a review he asked me what i thought about the tulip wind turbine let's go check that out so here's a picture of the tulip wind turbine and it's uh your your typical surveillance wind turbine uh, where it works off the principle of drag and uh, you know no matter how you shape these things and no matter what they look like this is an interesting shape it kind of looks like a tulip no doubt uh, but no matter how they shape these things you have half of the turbine working against itself and and I understand you know you have an aerodynamic shape here that that sends, tends to shed the wind the other side catches the wind makes it spin uh, these have very good startup and low wind conditions, you know, compared to the Darius, uh, but less efficiency in the higher wind applications. And so one of these days I need to build one of these and actually see what the actual output is of the uh, Surveillance type wind turbine. Many companies actually put the two together. So uh, because of the Darius has a hard time starting, uh, whereas the Surveillance uh, starts very well in low wind. So the two have often been put, you know, one inside of the other for low wind startup and plus good high speed performance. So it's kind of the best of both worlds. So uh, Lenny Nenbar, uh, Nemb Hard, uh, I'm butchering everybody's name. I know, I'm sorry. I, but uh, these darn Yanks, they can't seem to say names correctly, right? Uh, Anyways, this is the Magnum 5. We're going to check that out. So the Magnum 5, you know, this is the official website. Uh, Tessup, uh, I'm guessing, makes these. And But right off the bat, what I find disappointing, you know, and, and for the price, I would expect to get something pretty darn decent. You know, the, the design of this, particularly, uh, of this particular wind turbine is becoming very ubiquitous. Uh, in the turbine industry, you know, my Istabreeze, this looks almost like my Istabreeze, to be honest, you know, it's a very basic design, you know, you have your pole, you have your alternator, you have your tail, which directs the turbine into the wind, and you have these very familiar looking blades, uh, you know, that I'm sure people have shared the design, and they seem to work very well, at least mine do. Horizontal wind turbines, you know, but if you don't know by now, I I'm, I'm, am a fan of these over the vertical variety. I think they're a lot more efficient. There's criticism that perhaps they, they kill birds. Uh, they're ugly because they're high up and they have pros and cons. And people like them or dislike them for different reasons. But if you're looking for efficiency, this is the way to go. And just for giggles, I've included the Bergie Wind Turbine. 
Uh, these are very time-tested, time-proven wind generators that have been around for many, many years. And uh, these, uh, you're going to pay some money for them, but they are worth it. Uh, I have a neighbor of mine that has one of these installed. It's been going nonstop for 10 years. It, the property has changed ownership several times zero maintenance that i can see i don't ever remember this turbine coming down to have any work done on it it just keeps working and they have it in a really good place high up in the wind stream and this thing just turns when there just seems to be no wind at all that thing is moving all the time and so uh and these come in fairly big um uh models the, some of these models are are very large and they they create a lot of energy but they're a very uh, costly investment for some people. And so uh, this is the reason why you don't see a ton of these. But, you know, I do see them, especially here in Montana, especially driving around in Montana. I've seen quite a few of these Berge wind generators. And then you have the infamous Air X uh, horizontal axis wind turbine. These are very common in marinas. Uh, I remember when I lived in Morro Bay you would see an Air X on about every third sailboat would have an Air X wind turbine or something that looked like it. And so this design is uh, very recognizable uh, if you ever uh, go wind turbine hunting, if you will. I, we used to go to the, to the docks and look at the boats all the time. I was always very fascinated with boats and especially sailboats. And, um, and with my interest in wind generators as well, you know, it never, I would always spot these anyway. So, so I've hoped this video has helped you guys out just a little bit. You know, I do get these, you know, requests from, from you guys, uh, my viewers to review these things. And of course I can't really purchase all of them. I wish I could to try each one of them out for you, but, uh, I can give you kind of my educated guess. Now there was a criticism at one point where somebody had said that, well, I'm not a, I'm not an engineer. Um, and so therefore I have no business commenting on, you know, the efficiencies of wind turbines, but I have built probably, like I've mentioned before, at least five or six of these wind generators over the years, if not more. Um, and I've owned several of the commercial products and have seen many, many people. I live in an off-grid community of literally thousands of people that are off-grid. And so I talk to a lot of my neighbors and what they're using and their experiences have been and et cetera, et cetera. And, you know, and I look at the outputs of each one of them. Now, nobody I know up here has a vertical wind generator. They all have the horizontal axis wind turbines. So I haven't really had the opportunity to have personal uh, interaction with a vertical wind turbine, but hopefully, you know, if one of my neighbors don't eventually get one, I'll probably wind up either building one or purchasing one sometime down the road and we will give that a thorough look through and and see what all the hubbub's about with the with the vots but uh with that folks uh my name is Kerry martin you're watching off grid 406 thanks for watching hit that thumbs up don't forget to subscribe share my videos my channel's growing thank you guys so much for that um and i appreciate every single one of you guys I appreciate your comments if you guys agree disagree whatever put that in the comment section below i read every single comment and um and thank you again so we'll see you on the next video